Hello and okay, next tutorial. This time I've done a makeup for the heavy metal band Mushroom Head. Now I'm going to start off by saying I don't know a huge lot about this band so please forgive me but their masks are amazing so I thought I would try and mix a few together and see what I come up with really. So the X's that go across the face and the scratches down the front of the mask seem to be the band's main logo but every now and again they seem to all wear this makeup just different styles of it. Again I could be wrong but this type of style does show up a few times so I hope that's okay. I think it kind of looks quite cool so I thought I might go for it why not so as always this is the requested makeup so I'll flash the first few names of the people that requested it originally on screen now obviously I can't shout out everyone's name so I'm really sorry but these are the first few people that requested it and the very 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 first person that requested it who requested it a long time ago was future girl zone one so thank you so much for requesting this look and also a shout out to my friend Shannon who also requested that do this look so yeah if you'd like to learn how to recreate this makeup keep on watching so before I do anything, I'm going to need a blank slate to work with, so I need to get rid of all of my hair. So I'm going to be applying a latex ball cap and block out my eyebrows, so I'll pop links on the screen somewhere around here to the tutorials where I teach you guys how to do that, just to make this video a little bit shorter. So I'm going to get rid of all my hair and get back to you. So there we are, I've already blended the edge with a few layers of liquid latex just to get rid of the edge. Then I can take my sponge and liquid latex and I can start applying it on my forehead just to start building up the really angry brow. So I'm going to go over my eyebrows, so I'm just going to really, really heavily build that up for about four coats, let that dry, and then I can start applying tissue uh, to start really building it up. So then just before I start building up my brow anymore after I've done the three layers, I'm going to switch to a voiceover because this is going to take a while to dry so I'm going to work on the mouth area as well. So I'm going to switch over to a voiceover and cover the bottom half of my face and go over my nose in one layer of liquid latex as well. Then I took some regular tissue paper which I've already separated so I've got the thinner halves and working in really little strips I was able to apply some liquid latex over the three coats of latex that I've already done on my brow and then I pushed the tissue down and then applied some more liquid latex over the top of that after removing the excess tissue. So the idea is to keep doing that for probably about seven coats, really building it up and really forcing the shape that you want of an angry brow as you go along. Make sure to let each layer dry in between before you apply the next layer though, otherwise it will become quite difficult to work with. Then I applied more liquid latex to the bottom half of my mouth because this is where I'm going to be applying the tissue. There's no point in applying tissue around the eye area, it's just really where I want to block out my mouth and build up my brow. Then to really flatten the area out and to get rid of any ridges, I took some regular masking tape and working in about six strips, so maybe four going down and two going horizontally. This just really helps flatten things out and don't worry about the masking tape adhering to the surface, that's why we did the latex first, it really makes it stick down nicely. And then it's just a case of going over the area with more layers of liquid latex. It's going to take about three coats again just to get a real nice surface built up. Then the same again, I'm going to take some separated tissue paper, press that over my mouth and then blend that in with some liquid latex. It's going to take maybe three coats in the middle, two coats either side and then maybe one just to really blend it off into the sides of the face. Then to make the face look longer and a bit more surreal, I'm going to extend my jaw using pads of cotton wool. So I apply the latex in the area that I want which will be the bottom of my chin and then I can press the cotton wool down with my fingers and then I can apply liquid latex in a dabbing motion with a sponge over the top of that. This is going to take about 10 layers in all making sure the edges are really really blended out. I just want to work on the tip of my chin really not so much the sides. Then when it's all dry I can take really small strips of the masking tape and apply two strips either side of my nose. It's just going to build it up and make it look a tiny bit more skull like, like at the ridge of the end of the nose. It's best to start it off lower down at the point of your nose because if you end up putting it on higher you can see the tip of your nose and it will just kind of ruin the illusion. So I apply two strips of masking tape either side of the nose and then I can blend that in with liquid latex and a couple layers of tissue just to really get rid of the ridge that surrounds the masking tape. Then onto the painting. So I took some snazz root clown white as always and I used that to apply it all over my face and my neck. So the next thing I wanted to do was really muddy up the tone of the face. I didn't want it to be a block grey but I really wanted it to be like spackled black and look dirty and rustic. So I took some black hairspray and applying that at an arm's length distance in a well ventilated area I just went two or three laps around my face and my neck. Really sparse just applying it in different areas. It doesn't have to be even but the point is it needs to be broken patches of white and black. This also acts as a really good setting spray for the um, clown white rather than powdering it, so two birds, one stone. <laughs> then taking some black Snazaroo watercolour, I'm going to paint the eye shape that I want. So just underneath the hood of the latex prosthetic that I've made here, and just, just underneath the eye ever so slightly, making it as skull shape as you possibly can. And then taking a slightly damp clean brush, I'm just going to run that around the edge of the eye shape that I've drawn on, just a little tiny bit smoking it out and messing it up a tiny bit. Just You want it to look as rustic as possible really. 
Then using the black watercolour again, I'm going to draw on some really sharp looking cheekbones that go across the cheek and then down at the sides of the mouth, as well as the temples. So I'm not going to blend this just yet, I'm just going to draw on just so you can see where I've gone and I can blend it afterwards. So to blend it, I take a large fluffy clean brush that's slightly damp and I can just manipulate that colour by pulling it outwards. So I want the temples to be pulled completely outwards, leaving a slight darker line just where the shading starts and then they can do exactly the same again on the cheekbones and blending them completely downwards leaving the line on the top quite dark. And then taking the black watercolour again I just drew a couple extra frown lines above my eyebrows following the shape that I've already drawn on and then I can blend that colour with a new damp brush upwards. It just helps make the illusion that the eyes are a bit more frowning than they actually are. Then the fun part, the awesome markings that the mask has. So I'm going to use a MAC Red Chroma Cake colour, and the reason I use the MAC colour instead of Snazzaroo is just that it tends to be a bit more vibrant. I'm going to use that to paint on the, I think it's about six or eight lines going down the bottom of the mouth. The reason I'm painting it on first is because I, I want to paint it on just to get a rough shape, and then I can outline it with a black watercolour or a black eyeliner pen afterwards just to really get some nice detail. And then using my trusty Collection 2000 Extreme Felt Eyeliner Pen in black, I'm going to use that to trace on the lines that I want. So these lines aren't symmetrical, some of them are jagged, they're not straight lines going down, some of them are longer than others. It's That's not really the point, I think the point is it's just like a really, really cool scratch mark down the front of the face. So keep that in mind. Then using a black Snazzaroo watercolour and a really, really sharp angle brush, I use that to paint on the X's that are on the side of the face. So these lines are meant to be jagged and sharp and quite rough, so try not to make it too neat. I think the important thing is to try and make it as symmetrical as possible on both sides. Then just taking that red matte chroma cake again, I can just colour in those two X's. Then I'm going to use some fake blood now to make this look a bit more gory, and I'm going to just strip it along the sides of some of these spikes where each join line comes in, kind of as if it's carved in, and just going to let it trickle down on its own to make it look a bit more natural. I'll also pop a video link on the screen here just in case you'd like to know how to make your own fake blood. And then finally I took an iStudio Lasting Drama Gel Eyeliner by Maybelline and I used that to paint in the waterline of both my eyes just to make them look really dark and to get rid of any skin colour. Then what's left for me to do is pop in some contacts in my costume and I'm done. And there we go, so that's the makeup complete. So I finished the look off by popping in two Scalera contact lenses, which aren't completely vital because sometimes they have their own natural eyes, don't they? But I thought this might make it look a bit more dramatic. I ended up using some Scalera lenses from eyesbright.com, which I'll pop the link in the description bar below. They're these awesome red lenses, which I was toying with using some black Scalera lenses to really blend the eyes in to make it look more mask-like, but I think the red really makes it pop in this look, so I went with these. Um, the costume is this really awesome straight jacket costume I got from partycity.com, which again, I'll pop the link in description bar below yeah i think it completes the look why not and matches the blood <laughs> and the kind of the madness of the whole thing so i really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial it's a really fun and gory one to do it's nice to do a gory one every now and again isn't it <laughs> um so yeah i hope it was helpful to some of you guys out there as usual if you like it please make sure to you know rate comment subscribe and all that jazz and yeah so until next time bye guys